man's personality and character is exuded through his haircut. Your image is important. Our high-end services range from a traditional haircut and shave to gray blending, beard shaping, and unwanted hair removal. Located at 425 Victoria Avenue East, book your appointment online now at modernmen.ca or call Tammy, 306-522-4111. Modern Men, a haircut for the modern man. Hello, I'm Sean McNall, owner of TG Marketing. We are a promotional product company located in Regina, Saskatchewan. Originally founded by Tom G. McNall in 1985, we are now in our 35th year of business. My brother Ryan and I, along with our great staff, have carried the torch since Tom retired in 2011. For those of you who don't know what we do, we sell items with a company's logo on it, like clothing, pens, phone chargers, Bluetooth speakers. The list of products available is endless. Our products are a great form of advertising. Whether you want to give a gift to a valued client or show your appreciation to your staff, we have a friendly team that can help find the right product for your needs. The key to our success has been our customer service and our vast knowledge of products in our industry. We ask the right questions to get you in line with the proper product for the project you are working on. Stop by 1046 Winnipeg Street in viewer showroom. Get some ideas for that next promotion you're working on. Let's make your business what everyone's talking about. They don't figure it out with Patrick Lyonnais. Eh? I guarantee Patrick Lyonnais eh, wins this battle. Uh, Tortorella will not win it after trading Pierre-Luc Dubois for him. How about that? I know John Tortorella very, very well. He wears on you. He's tough. He demands 100%, which every coach should. But I truly believe you can't coach each player the exact same way. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It is. Good morning, Canada and Canadian sports fans around the world. Welcome to the RP Show. I'm just trying to share this in all the various groups. And I said to Dupes before we went to air, I can't wait until the day that we're big enough that I don't personally have to go into Facebook and share this show to all my Facebook friends. Well, that'd be some. We're not there yet. <laughs> How about that? Big day today on the program. Some big names uh, in sports. Sean Reynolds joining us from Sportsnet Winnipeg. He'll have a take on what uh, Matthew Barnaby said yesterday, I'm sure, on Patrick Laine being benched in Columbus. Isn't that something? Yeah. Uh, that's our poll question today. I'm going to jump right into it. Our poll question for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. Who lasts longer in Columbus, John Tortorella or Patrick Laine? And I need to think about that for a while. Usually the player, the coach lasts longer. What are they saying on Facebook there? Yeah, Patrick Liney, 67%. <sighs> I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying necessarily that I agree yet. I, I got to think about this. This came up in our <clears throat> the pre-show meeting. It was Clark's idea. And I, I, I like the poll question. I don't know what they're saying on Twitter. I smell a face off. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do too. Um, let me find it here. Do, do, do. What are they saying on Twitter? Yeah, Liney. <laughs> 59% say Patrick Liney will outlive John Tortorella in Columbus. I got a great Columbus story, by the way. Best, uh, best talk I ever had with my dad was in Columbus, Ohio. Really? I'll save it for later in the program because everybody's all geeked up about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Sean Reynolds of Sportsnet Winnipeg. John Murphy, the assistant GM of the Toronto Argonauts. And Ricky Collins Jr., our good buddy, former Rough Rider 
Eskimo and BC Lion will be with us, and maybe he'll announce what team he's signing with today. That's, that'd be cool. That would be cool, Ricky. Don't let us down, bud. Let's go to the quick six show topics, please, uh, Jordan. Do you understand that's the horn from the General Lee in Dukes of Hazard? Do you guys know that? Do you know that? So Jordan's, <laughs> <clears throat> can we go back to the old one? They're having some fun. Yeah, they're having fun back there. Why don't you use some of those uh, effects while we go through the quick six, quick six show topics here? Like it doesn't help our podcast listeners, but if you got something, let's just spice it up today. <clears throat> the new viewers have no idea what I'm talking about. So no. well. Hit it. Come on. You can't found one yet? Find one. Like that. <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> Anyways, here are the quick six show topics, and then I'll, uh, I'm going to rattle through them and then spend some more time on them. Number one, day one CFL free agency recap. Number two, Tuesday NHL leftovers. Number three, Dr. Shahab, this province's top doctor, has confirmed a bubble concept for the Western Hockey League's East Division. Number four, Dak Prescott's been left out of the Dallas Cowboys. Hype video. It's front page news in Dallas. Don't laugh. Point five, where will Cameron Judge go? There's been a lot of talk about uh, that. Last year's West Division Most Outstanding Canadian has not signed with anybody yet in CFL free agency. And point six, more on the Bell TSN cuts. So those are our quick six here in the warm-up for the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Come in and warm up at the Four Seasons. Your home for the NHL and UFC. So to the day one CFL free agency recap, I'm calling it up from our website, rodpeterson.com, with the actual Canadian press update was, I saw somebody say last night on Twitter, <clears throat> where you know it's got to be true if it's on twi- Twitter, right? Be. That it was a snooze fest, that day one of CFL free agency was a snooze fest. And I thought, what are you talking about? That, that That's in no way true. You're being a Debbie Downer or a... Dawn Downer on that because let's be honest for those that have covered the CFL for a long time and for those that have been fans of the CFL for a long time I've long said you've got phase one phase two phase three free agents well phase one free agents were last week Charleston Hughes Nick Arbuckle Matt Nichols that was all got out of the way so they opened free agency on Tuesday with phase two free agents I don't think anybody would argue with that that's right these weren't sexy names but James Wilder Jr. Comes out of his retirement. There's a big name. He might have been the biggest name to switch teams in free agency on Tuesday. And uh, so the Montreal Alouettes here signing six defensive players. Almondo Sewell, Nick Usher, uh, Nick Usher, Michael Wakefield, and Woody Barron. Also linebackers Patrick Levels and Chris Aki. Siante Evans signing with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Linebacker Enoch Mwamba still out there. There's some intrigue there. Enoch likes to get paid. And by the way, who doesn't? But I'd like to also point out, if you wait long in this climate, you might be in this game of musical chairs. The music might stop and you might not have a chair. Remember, Is there a chance of that? Remember Darrell Walker? Oh, yeah. It same was, thing happened it, it to him. It was the same thing, right? So, yeah, you might end up without a chair if you wait too long. I think, you know, when, when the idea of it being a snooze fest is thought about, I think it's because when you think about yesterday, we don't think about CFL free agency. We think about their media partner totally usurping all of the headlines in, our, in all of our conversations. <clears throat> oh, and I'm saying nice partner, Bell is of TSN. And um, this is why people love this show. I, I, I know it because you're not going to see what I say on any other network or uh, radio station in the country, but this is the truth. Anytime any of us have dared to criticize TSN for how they treat the CFL, Usually somebody older than us says, hey, 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 shut your mouth, because there would not be a CFL without TSN. They write the check to save this league. Well, I kind of quietly under my breath, and I'm going to say it aloud now, think this. It's like the husband who just ignores his wife. It's a loveless marriage. It's, he just, you know, he goes out and does his own thing, and she's there, and finally she stands up and goes, you know, you don't treat me very well. And he's like, what are you talking about? I pay your bills, don't you? Look, don't I? What are you bitching about? That's what it seems like to me. It could be better. So don't say, hey, we're we're paying all your bills. We're paying your salary cap. It could be so much better. Fair? Yeah, that's fair. Absolutely, it could be better. I mean, we want to stroke a check and and think that we've we've done our responsibility, right? 
Right. There's more to it than that. And it's day in and day out being a good partner and, and having your equal part of the relationship is more than just money. And incidentally, I'm not criticizing TSN for what they do. I also understand that there would not be a CFL without TSN, but it could be better. That's all that I'm saying. 46 minutes into Sports Center was when they got it to the CFL. And what they mentioned was that Solomon Elamimian had retired. There was nothing about Micah Johnson that I saw going to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders or Evan Johnson, Johnson as in Johnson as I like to say, or any of these big names like Don Unamba, the president going to Ottawa, uh, Michael O'Connor, the Canadian quarterback signing with Calgary, the BC Lions signing Lucky Whitehead. We're a big fan of him here. Yeah, he's been on the show. Uh, Winnipeg signing long snapper Mike Benson, who's a Winnipeg product, and the Argos signing quarterback Antonio Pipkin. There was no coverage of that, but that's fine. I'm not complaining about TSN. What I've said here with this show is that we're the anti-TSN. And when we've knocked all these achievements, like going to Game Plus TV, national television, 31 states in the United States, and people say, that's great. Next, you'll be on TSN or Sportsnet. We're like, no, no, no. That's not what we want. We want to build up what we're doing, and that's through CFL coverage and CHL coverage and all the other things that you don't get on that channel. Boy, am I going deep on CFL free agency. Yeah, but it's, I mean, that's inexcusable to not have that at or near the top of your coverage. It's one of the biggest days in the calendar of the league. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't imagine another league and free agency not being in the first opening block of the show. But <clears throat> from our viewers... <sighs> Roger Yee, good morning, Rod Squad, checking in from Calgary. Serious question, who thinks there will actually be a CFL season this year? I seriously hope there is, but I am not holding my breath. I think there will be a CFL season. Let's go with that. Corey Dottavio in Winnipeg says, like my marriage counselor. Which part? Are you ignoring your wife? Dion Langevin, hello from Cranbrook, B.C. From Kim Kret, so true, Roddy, so true. Perhaps we need another network not based in Toronto. Listen, it's in my commentary today on Cat Country 98 FM. This hashtag boycott bell, it ain't going to work. Do you remember the boycott, the gas? Remember, don't get gas on Wednesday. That'll teach them. I know. It didn't work <laughs> to fight against rising fuel prices. And uh, I would rather go without gasoline and oxygen than TSN. So I'm not purporting any, <laughs> any banning of TSN or Bell. I'm not. I think they could do better for the CFL, but that's just me. How many times have I said I am not to be listened to? <clears throat> you ready to move on? Sure. Tuesday NHL. Le oh, I deleted the tweet. Tuesday NHL leftovers. I'm going to have to go from memory. Uh, the Oilers, it would be nice if they played Ottawa 56 times. They'd be 56-0. and 0. Uh, Number two, Pierre-Luc Dubois in his debut with the Winnipeg Jets last night. Again, the Sam Mitchell line. Zero, zero, zero. And minus one. And even he said after the game he could play better. Here's one. Ron Hextall and Brian Burke are going to the Pittsburgh Penguins to run the team. I was talking to a former Philadelphia Flyer yesterday, and he goes, how about that? Berkey and Hexy, two former Flyers, two old Flyers. Well, I put that in my leftovers, and I had a guy who will not, his nickname or his initials are TP. He gets in my face today, and he goes, when was Brian Burke ever a Flyer? He's regarded as a Philly guy, okay? I don't, why am I explaining myself to you? This came from a Philly Flyer alum who said two former Flyers are now running the Penguins. Thought it was funny. Why am why am I having to defend I don't know. this? I don't know. Uh, I said, here come the Hawks. And a guy emailed yeah. me, the show account. He was upset. He's in Okotoks, Alberta. And he said uh, that I had mentioned the struggling Blackhawks yesterday. He's a Blackhawks fan. He took umbrage with that. He said, the Blackhawks are 6-1-3, and three, second place in the Central. Well, Clark went to the big board. Producer Clark looked it up. And they're like, everybody behind them has four games in hand on them. Can't deny they've had points in 10 of their last 11, but they're not Stanley Cup contenders yet. Not yet. No, they're going to have to prove this. They're coming. Over more than just a couple of weeks of the season. From Patrolman Pete on YouTube, 
comments. He says, give Dubois a break. The guy was in quarantine and not skating for two weeks, and he only had a couple of practices with the new team. He'll be fine. I don't think Patrolman Pete's looking for a fight at all. I knew when I put out that stat line that they would get upset. I knew that. All I did was put out what his stat line was. No opinion. No, no opinion. Quoting Sam Mitchell. Zero, zero, zero. Minus one. You take it from there. And they did. Yeah. Point three. Dr. Shahab, he's the top doctor in this province. He's doing great work, keeping everybody safe and healthy from the virus. He confirmed in a news conference on Tuesday that they are looking at a bubble concept for the Western Hockey League's East Division. No date was given. Did you read any of the quotes by chance? Yeah, I looked at it. I've seen some of them. He said this bubble is working in every other league that's using it across Canada. So if the WHL can pull it off, we're game. That was pretty positive to me. Very positive. And now, you know, it feels like the next step is, you know, what's Manitoba going to do, right? They have to play ball. And will they make an announcement, you know, in the, in the next day or two? We're hoping so, right? But they, you know, reduce some of the restrictions where they can let the teams out. And if those teams can get clearance, then we probably fast track towards a bubble being announced. But, yeah, that's exciting that he's on board. It's a big start. Big start. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to straddle this with... Uh, the comments. William May says, Three Down Nation said the CFL's to starting talks about the start of the league. Now, I believe they're going to play. So, if you don't, why are you watching? Point four. Dakota Prescott left out of the Dallas Cowboys hype video. Um, couple points on that. One, I'm watching ESPN as I do every morning. And my wife said to me, Oh, what's ESPN going to talk about now that the NFL season's done? I said, The NFL! That's something that the CFL could get their head around and become a 12-month league. And believe me, they don't want to. I'm not going to go too deep into that other than I've sat in the meetings where they've said, let's just go dark for a period of six months, three to six months. Let's not do any interviews. <sighs> you can't fight that. No, you can't. But whereas ESPN, I said, watch, Cindy, they will be talking about the NFL Every morning on Get Up, year round. And we love it. We can't get enough of it. So this yeah. morning, it was about Dak Prescott being left out of the Dallas Cowboys, did a two minute video hyping next season, season tickets, blah, blah, blah. And Dak Prescott wasn't in the video. Listen, I'm a Cowboys fan, man. That's putting it right on the tee for me. The question of whether he should be in there or not. What Dominique Foxworth said this morning, and I love him. He goes, who knows if Jerry Jones was consulted on that video? And I'm thinking, I wouldn't be shocked if it went all the way up to Jarrah's office. Jarrah, <laughs> we did this video downstairs in the content department. You could have a look at it before we send it out here. <clears throat> Sounds good. Dak ain't in there, right? No, sir. Nah, go ahead. <laughs> He's not under contract. By his choice, Dak Prescott blew up his ankle in what, week four last year, five? His season was over. It was his decision to take the franchise tender, which means a one-year contract, and gamble that he'll be worth more after the season, and it didn't work. That gamble blew up in his face. No, he shouldn't be in the hype video. There was a lot of alumni, but also some stars, right? I didn't watch the video, but I'm assuming Zeke Elliott and Amari Cooper and whoever else. Not Dak Prescott. You don't want to be part of what we're doing here? That was your decision. You're not coming in our video. That makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. You? Yeah, and, and we want to read the tea leaves, right? It means they don't want him back. That means that he's not in their future plans. Because as soon as he is traded, signed somewhere else, isn't coming back, then they got to redo the video, right? Yes. So I get it, being safe, but it's your quarterback. Every quarterback in the history of football and every single team is on the poster, on the cover of the magazine, on the program, and in the hype video. So I understand why Cowboys fans would get a little squirrely when for the first time in 100 years the quarterback doesn't appear in a piece of promo, right? But... I, but. You get where I'm coming but from. But I get where you're coming And I'm coming from the wisdom of a few trips around the sun. Dak Prescott is a 20-something quarterback. He's a young kid. But I'm sitting there going, life's about choices. Dak, you made your choice. Don't blame your agent. Don't blame your 
brother, you made the choice. You're not part of what we're doing here. Don't be mad. Uh, anyways, point five is where will Cam Judge go, but we'll discuss that later. Point six is more on the bell cuts, and I could go on on that all day, but we're out of time right now, so uh, we got time. We got time later. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sean Reynolds joins us next from Winnipeg. This has been the warm-up for the Four Seasons Sports Palace. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV Network across 10 provinces and 31 states. Live daily on YouTube and Facebook. And listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade and Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Look like the pros. Shop Ultimate Fan Zone. NHL, NFL, MLB, CFL, NBA, and more. We have something for every sports fan. Autographed jerseys, prints, jersey stitching, custom framing, and collectibles. UFZ is your one-stop sports store offering fans official team gear. Check out Saskatchewan's Man Cave Corner on River and Main, downtown Moose Jaw, or visit us online at ultimatefanzone.ca. Built by fans for the fans. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say. And I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> hey, it's Warren Dean. I understand more than anyone how changing weather affects your day, and that's no different for your vehicle. That's why I look to the experts at Suds Full Service Car Wash. They have a wide range of exterior washes, including Lava Shield with Towel Dry. Looking good, Natalie and Kirby. And don't forget their famous Suds Ultimate. Thoroughly cleans the interior of your car. Open Monday to Saturday, no appointment necessary. Head to Suds Full Service Car Wash today, where they treat you like family. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. It is, and I'm just going to check the Prairie Mobile text line. It's open and ready to roll at 840-8777. Prairie Mobile is your authorized SaskTel Mobility Center headquartered in Winnipeg. It's Ray from the 6. 
The 416, he says, says, hi, Rod, is there any big surprise line A was benched? The only question was how long it would take. I believe the GM can take his share of the blame, and he has to get players that Torts likes to play or cut bait with Torts. The most skilled isn't always the best solution for Tortorella. And there's a comment that came in from Winnipeg, if Clark can put it up on the screen. Dale Berezuk, love the show. My son wants you guys on radio. We have a spot here now in Winnipeg. Well... I don't know. That's not my. That's not my area. I just sit here and talk every day. Where are we going? You found us. That's good enough for me now. Where we go from here, we'll see. Uh, Sportsnet's Sean Reynolds joins us from the aforementioned Manitoba capital today. He's got his lid on today, I'd, and a Spurs lid. I've got to ask you, Sean. Have you lost weight, or did you grow your hair out, or both? It struck me the other day watching you on TV. It's both. I, I, I lost the weight in here and I'm trying to grow it back with the hockey hair. So yeah, I, I, uh, uh, as the story goes, I was heading to the bubble in Edmonton to cover the playoffs and, uh, I'd been in quarantine for a while and went to put the suits on and two thirds of them didn't fit. So that was a problem. I needed to take care of that. And I, uh, uh, did some exercise and some better eating. I dropped 40 pounds, uh, before Christmas. So, uh, yeah, I needed to, needed to get the house in order, so to speak. You know, the, the quarantine hits everybody in different ways. It hit me hard. Uh, so I needed to hit back. Good for you. I just thought that my suits shrunk. That's what I, that's what I thought. Dang, <laughs> it might be me. Anyways, we got a lot of things to get to with you, but let's start with the Flames beating the Jets last night by one. It seems to me that these teams are very even. I figured it would be a one-goal game, kind of a disputed ending in the, in the contest. Uh, how did you feel about that Jets-Calgary game last night at the Dome? Yeah, it looks like every time these two teams are going to play, they're going to be right there with each other. I think there was a little bit of a feeling that maybe the Flames had taken steps to get ahead of the Jets, the way things went in the playoffs last year. But, I mean, you take line A out of that lineup and Shifley out of that lineup with injury, and that just so affects the depth that the Jets had in that situation that I think, you know, people feel like uh, Calgary was maybe a step above. Um, I had them finishing ahead of the Jets in this division, but uh, clearly – uh, the, the the way that those two teams play when they get it against each other, it's always a tight game. The same as it is between the Jets and Edmonton, to be honest. So um, as for last night's game, it, it, it looked to me like, you know, that was the fourth straight game that the Jets had played Calgary. Calgary played a game against Edmonton in between, which I think was good for them. It sparked a little bit of life back into that team, uh, them igniting things with the, the Battle of Alberta, because they were looking a little flat to me by the end of that three-game set. I think the Jets, who are playing a better five man defensive game this year, look to be kind of wearing them down, frustrating them, making them take, you know, uh, decisions that, that I'm not used to seeing that Calgary team make, uh, putting, taking risks that didn't pay off for them. So um, what I saw in that game last night was a return to Calgary kind of buckling down. And, and I think that that's the kind of game that you can expect from both those teams when you see them playing against each other for the rest of this season and potentially into the playoffs. Right. So I'll be honest, I watched two periods of the game and I really didn't notice Pierre-Luc Dubois. I looked up the stat line after zero, 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 minus one. And even he said he could be better. What were the expectations in Winnipeg for Dubois' first game as a Jet? Not much at all, I don't think. And that's not saying anything about the player. It's saying, about you know, talking about the two-week quarantine. I believe he said in the post game yesterday he'd never been injured before so he'd never missed time and so all of a sudden he goes from what was it game five to game 14 or 15 or something like that uh i guess not not in the the jets case but uh, i mean he misses two weeks of time and uh spent that time trying to stay in shape uh in his living room with equipment that the jets had dropped off that he could uh that he could take part in uh that may work for you and i uh but when you're you know an elite level athlete uh you know getting those reps in being on the ice staying sharp uh, it's the difference between succeeding and not succeeding on the ice so paul maurice had said you know he's only going to get better he liked some of the things that he saw from him um, but I don't think they were expecting him to go out and score three goals and light it up. Uh, although I think they were doing everything they could last night to kind of spark a fire. They started, they put Kyle Connor, who, you know, is basically the Jets best scorer on his line to try and get something going there. They started with Trevor Lewis, I think simply because he was a right wing uh, and moved him off fairly quickly and put Mason Appleton up there. Who's got, you know, 
uh, it's legs to burn. You know, he can he can really move and has been putting the puck in the net and having some success. So they're trying to get him going, you know, maybe create some early confidence. But, you know, the fact that he played the way he did last night and wasn't able to produce, I don't think surprises anyone, and I don't think anyone's worried about it. So what everybody wants to talk about today is Patrick Laine and the benching yes. the other night. <laughs> yeah. Were you surprised it happened this soon? I am surprised. I'm really surprised. And, you know, the first thing that I thought, because I was watching the game as it happened and was kind of blown away because, you know, one, you're you're thinking, you know, here's a, a new player, a star player, you know, clearly the, the biggest star power they would have other than maybe Seth Jones. Uh, and even then, probably, you know, the biggest star power they would have. And, you know, he's coming into a new system. He's been through a bit of a quarantine. He's been through, you know, a tough situation in Winnipeg. Um, and, and you'd think that, that what it would take for a guy like that to be benched in a situation like that, you'd think you'd be giving him all the rope you could considering the situation that he's coming out of. Uh, but, I mean, with the reports coming out that he had, uh, I don't want to call it an altercation, uh, but it sounds like he, he didn't respond too well to one of the assistant coaches. Um I was surprised, to be honest with you. I didn't really see that coming. I didn't think that or expect that he was going to be benched. I think that he's been a good teammate. I think that a lot of times when you take guys who have, you know, offensive capabilities like that, you've got to learn to take the good with the bad. So uh, I don't look at him as being a player who needs to be, you know, he, he's, I think, got three goals since he showed up there. I think he was a goal a game player. I don't know what else you're asking for a guy. Do you need him to be the most offensive player on the team? Probably not, but you do need him to check in. But, you know, I think they've made it clear there that it's more about the interaction with with uh, one of the staff members that has caused that issue. So I was surprised to see that uh, and hoping that they can figure that out there, because, I mean, clearly at this stage, you know, the Columbus Blue Jackets need Patrick Laine and and Patrick Laine, who's under contract or under team control with that team for another three years, needs the Columbus Blue Jackets. Were you surprised because you couldn't believe that Laine would lip off a coach? Like, because you've been around him? Is that why you were surprised? Or why were you surprised? Yeah, I mean, it just seems like for something like that to happen that quickly, uh, he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who who would, you know, tell a coach that he barely knows off. I mean, I don't know. Maybe frustrations were boiling to the surface. Anything I would do at this stage would be speculating. But, yeah, I, I didn't see that coming. I, I mean, I had thought I'd saw a couple of the plays uh, and thought, okay, maybe that's why he's getting benched. And if that's the case, boy, oh, boy, is, is John Tortorella setting – uh, a precedent here and, and look I've had conversations with some people about the industry John Tortorella is a coach of a team that probably doesn't have the best lineup and yet two years ago they knocked off the Tampa Bay Lightning in four straight games in the playoffs and last year they knock off the Toronto Maple Leafs this is a team that succeeds because it gets buy-in and I think it's trouble it, you, you don't get buy-in from the rest of your team if you're going to make exceptions for certain guys so I had thought you know maybe that's the case but just doing it so early I thought was risky and you know affecting the relationship that you have with Patrick Liney. If it's a case where he's, you know, having a improper interaction with a coach, I don't think that's something that you can ignore. But yeah, I'm surprised it happened. I, I didn't see something like that coming and it makes me want to know what happened that led up to that. It would be great to hear both sides of the story. The uh, poll question today is who will last longer in Columbus, Torts or Line A? And it's presented by Capital Auto Mall or in Winnipeg, Capital Ford, right across from Polo Park Mall. Glenn Elm writes in on YouTube. He says, if Line A was smart, he'd embrace Torts. He's only going to make him better. Eh, it's hard to tell a young kid that. And the, the burning question I have for you, Sean, this is where I noticed your striking weight loss was your stand-up the other day <laughs> on Paul Maurice calling out the Winnipeg media. And I had to shoot a text to a Winnipeg media member. I said, who was Paul calling out? And he says, it was, every, it was all of Winnipeg. It wasn't one reporter. It was just the negativity in town. Did I get the right report on that? Get off Kyle Connor here. We're 6-3-1, and one, which they were at the time, and that was the basis of your report. Uh, was that a testy day? Oh yeah, yeah, and so, so it, it was. It was me who asked the question that that Paul Maurice really went off on, and and yeah, I I, I didn't take that as targeted at, at me. He'd refer, he'd referenced a number of different things that had happened. He'd referenced a question that had been asked by a different reporter the night before about a play that that uh, the report that reporter had thought 
Blake Wheeler was at fault for a goal, and, and Paul Maurice took exception with that. Um, it, to me, he was calling out the media, he was calling out Twitter, he was calling out hockey fans, and he was essentially saying, you know, you got to back off my captain here. The question that I'd asked, essentially, because you could tell he was getting testy every time this came up with Blake <laughs> Wheeler. The, the, the question that I had asked was, do you think based on what Blake Wheeler's done as a captain of this team, what he's done for the franchise, what he's done in the past, did, did he deserve a buffer from this criticism that he was uh, receiving, you know, maybe to, for some time to get his game going again? And, and you know, I, I was just reading Elliot Friedman's 31 Thoughts, and, and, and he'd said in there that part of that he thought was the fact that, you know, Paul Maurice thought you know, uh, um, that Blake Wheeler deserves more, you know, being a guy who decides to stay in Winnipeg, stay with the team has represented them so long. Um, I mean, my response to that is, you know, he stayed in Winnipeg because he got paid a whole lot of money over $8 million to stick around over the course of a contract that is probably not going to be beneficial for the Winnipeg Jets by the time it's said and done. Uh, I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve credit for the things he's done. It's why I'd ask the question is because I recognize all the things that he's done. But I think what's happened here in this situation is if you were to ask Blake Wheeler and if you were to ask Paul Maurice to be honest about it whether Blake Wheeler was playing his best hockey or not right now the answer to that would be no so what Paul Maurice did was he jumped out he pushed back he put up his dukes and said anyone wants to fight I'm here I'm ready to go and tried to and has created some space uh for for Blake Wheeler to not be criticized. Now, the issue with that is eventually the way that you stop the criticism is you just start playing so good you can't be criticized. Uh, Paul Maurice has bought that time for Blake Wheeler. Blake Wheeler still a couple games later or at least one game later has yet to shut that criticism up with his play. And in the end, that's what it's going to take because the criticism will come back no matter how testy Paul Maurice gets if this situation continues. All right. Wonderful explanation. And by the way, viewer Brady says, love the Spurs cap, Sean. What's the story behind that? Have you been to AT&T Center? No, I haven't. And, you know, it's it's tough getting Spurs gear. I, I'm not the biggest fan of this hat, but it seems like you got to go to San Antonio to get a good Spurs hat. Like you, I'm a Cowboys fan. Uh, so that I think when I was younger got me a little interested in Texas. But I was at a hockey camp in 1992, and a guy was wearing the old Spurs logo hat that had the pink and the blue in it. And I thought, you know what? Any team that's ballsy enough to have <laughs> pink in its logo, I like those guys, and I've been a Spurs fan ever since. And if you see David Robinson back Back in the day, I mean, the guy's got the most perfect athletic physique that's ever existed. I was a massive David Robinson fan. The he Admiral. me in, and it's been good years with them ever since. The Admiral. The man, in my Oh, opinion. yeah. No, no. I'm a fan. Believe me. And, hey, I was at a game in San Antonio a year and a half ago. Uh, Snoop Dogg and I were there. Uh, oh, he was, he was oh courtside. He was courtside, and I was in the nosebleeds. But I tell everybody that we were... Uh, <laughs> We were there together. As long as you were there together, yeah. Hey, next time you go, make sure you give me a heads up. I need you to buy me one of these hats. Oh, they got a their pro wonderful shop. store. Wonderful store there. Great stuff, yeah. Okay, Sean, we're watching closely, as you can tell. Thanks for the time today, pal, and stay warm. Anytime. Can't wait till I'm on next time. All right, Sean Reynolds joining us from Sportsnet Winnipeg. Uh, Fear the conspiracy writes in on YouTube. He says, I'm waiting for more big CFL news, more Argos news, especially. So hang on. We'll talk about uh, CFL free agency. Just so you know, we did a, a massive recap at the start of the program today on day one. And uh, we'll talk about what's popping on day two when we come back. Viewer takeover as well. It's the RP show you're watching on Game Plus TV, Facebook, and YouTube Live. And listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Comfort has always been something we as people strive for. It means that the places we live and work and that the people we care most about are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy.
At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. An original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rob. Welcome back, everybody. Just getting to some comments here. Ricardo watching. He's a Ticats fan. He says Mike Filer was the last remaining Hamilton Tiger Cat who played in Ivor Wynn. Fans are going to miss him in the hammer. Um, where was the comment? Can you get the comment from Devin in Burns Lake, B.C.? watching he had a comment regarding tsn radio there it is good morning from burns lake bc devastated for the loss of tsn radio stations hope all these guys out of work find some ground somewhere sad business to be in but don't think i can be that what does he say but don't think it can be that shady when it comes to pulling the plug Oh, it can be that shady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Believe me. Anyways, we'll come back on that. But a sports update here. Elias Lindholm scored the winner with less than two minutes to go when the Calgary Flames earned a 3-2 home win over the Winnipeg Jets. Forward Pierre-Luc Dubois finally made his Jets debut after being acquired from Columbus two weeks ago. He played 13 minutes, didn't have a shot on net. The Oilers are above 500 for the first time this season after beating the Senators 3-2 in Ottawa. The Pittsburgh Penguins are under new management. The team has hired Ron Hextall as general manager and veteran NHL executive Brian Burke as president of hockey operations. I'd long heard, not from Berkey, but from a friend of Berkey's, they said he'll get back into hockey and hockey ops, but he wants to work for a team that the owner isn't an idiot. If he's answering to good guys, mm -hmm. he, he would do it. Where's he going? Pittsburgh. Who owns the team? Mario Lemieux. It's a perfect fit. He doesn't want to work for idiots. I know the feeling. 
Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes will have surgery this week on the turf toe injury he suffered in the playoffs. That likely will sideline him for the start of the offseason program, but ensure he'll be ready well before training camp. Kyle Busch snagged the first win of the new season, streaking past NASCAR champion Chase Elliott after Elliott spun leader Ryan Blaney in the final stretch of the exhibition Busch Clash. Bush led only the final 300 feet of the race, Darren. It was a win for Joe Gibbs Racing. For Bush, the win comes after a disappointing one-win season for the 2019 NASCAR champion. Oh, I'm no fly-by-night, hit-it-and-quit-it guy. I'm in on NASCAR. I fell in love with it last year, and I'm down. Yeah, clearly. It's cool. And it's so cool. As soon Auto as, racing in general. Is as soon as cool. it melts, we'll be back in the car, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. This sports update for Ballers Rec Room. We can handle all your food and fun needs. Visit their website at ballersrecroom.com. And for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. We're uh, combining Facebook comments and YouTube comments, so I'm just trying to get my mind around all of them. And I'm worried for Darren's well-being because if you look over there, we're going to put the full shot on him. He's wearing a sweater and sandals. Yeah. And I've had some people wondering, what's your deal? It's 80 degrees in the studio. It is so bloody hot under these lights. I'm deaf. Oh, here's the. Now they're showing your crotch. What's up with that? Is your fly open? I don't think so. <laughs> I think we're as, as, as speed, my dad, what's the speed limit to Texas? My dad would say if my fly was down, yeah. he'd go, you advertising? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. It's the, oh, my feet. Oh, I, I, my feet were up here. I see. Is this what you wanted? What did you want me to do? Anyways, it's... Uh, we got an airflow problem in the building, right? Oh, do we ever. They can't, they can't warm up downstairs. And every time they turn the heat higher, all it does is gets pumped into the studio. But, um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I have my winter boots, I, like my, my, my winter shoes, and I wear those. And then I get here, and it's so hot. I'm almost, like, contemplating changing into shorts. <laughs> I almost put on a pair today, too. We'll get back to sports in a moment. But I want to say this. I, I filmed a video last night. Late yesterday afternoon for a kid in the States, he's a 15-year-old hockey player who's losing his leg to ward off osteosarcoma, okay? And it was from his mom. She said, can you do a video for my son? And I'm like, I'm going to go outside and film this. It was just a short inspirational, motivational video, and they've asked a lot of people to do it for him, and I did. But I'm like, 30 seconds outside and my face was frozen. I'm running back into the house going, that song, The Weekend, I Can't Feel My Face. I've heard it's about cocaine, but maybe it was about living in Saskatchewan. It, it was be. insane. It might be. And I'm right. thinking, you are so bloody soft. Because there's so many people that are outside working in a variety of occupations. You can handle it. You can be outside and film this video for Gage is his name. But uh, so to, to complain about how hot it is in this studio, nobody's crying tears no. for us. No, exactly. And I mean, it's, it's a small problem. It's not a, it's not a big issue. <laughs> what do you got? John Ohm in Winnipeg. Let me get the Ohm. Your fly's down. <laughs> the moose is loose. <laughs> Hold up, Andre. That's outstanding. Andre the moose. That was sent in from vu viewer Todd. Yeah, thank you. Bill Lothian says, where does one find this? What do you find what? Now Lawless is texting me from Vegas. Everything is happening! The show, the moose, the... Uh... One of our sponsors asked me if I could get something cool from the Golden Knights for his six-year-old nephew, who's a Golden Knights fan in Saskatoon. I said, what are you thinking? He goes, well, can you hit up Lawless for something? And uh, so we're trying, and Gary's like, I can't get you anything autographed because not, we're not allowed to talk. We have not seen the players face-to-face -face in almost a year. Wow. That's and, that's, and that's, I was saying to somebody the other day, if there was a Peter King, because Peter King's basically retired, I would like somebody to take me inside the NHL or NFL and tell me how they're living their life because Peter King would have done that. Yes. For the NFL, they're being... Tested three times a day. They're staying in this hotel. They're wearing these badges that have laser beams shooting off of them. That's what's happening in the NFL. I don't know what's going on in the NHL. For Gary to say that was a major uh, revelation to me. 
He's like, we can't, we don't have any access to the players. Wow. I know. So now he's saying, what, what else can, can I do? That's wild. Like, you, yeah, you think that they're, they're open and back to playing, but you still don't have that interaction. No. We'll be back. We'll be back after this break with viewer takeover. And that is always fun. So get your comments ready. Prairie mobile text line, 840-8777, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube, and Facebook Live daily. And listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. This right here is time well spent. Why not pour yourself a smooth Saskatchewan-made Original 16? Warm up to the opportunity to seize the day. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. He's covering everything that matters to you. It's the Rod Peterson Show. Tune in live Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to noon to catch the show live and be a part of the action. Take control by commenting live and sharing the show with your friends. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, mm. Rod Peterson. Okay, viewer takeover, and we're going to do something here now that we don't normally do, and that is, what's a highly underrated movie? This is so last May, right? Like, what's your top ten this? What's yeah. your top five that? What's your greatest sports movie? But we're, I was just saying, the, the worst thing that happened to the movie Hall Pass is that it came out a week before The Hangover. Oh, yeah. Because The Hangover just crushed it. There were so many great lines in Hall Pass. Yes. Owen Wilson and your twin. 
Sudeikis. Jason Sudeikis, yeah. What is an underrated movie that never got its due? And don't say Slapshot because it's regarded as a cult classic. Yeah. Right? So it's, you can't, it can't be that. What is an underrated movie? Period, please. Uh, Mike Hogan writes in. He's the voice of the Toronto Argonauts. He says, good luck interviewing Murph. He's quiet by nature. I'm just worried we won't have enough time. It's only a two-hour show. You know who also was like that was Eric Tillman. I was interviewing him for my book, the best-selling book called Green Magic on the Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. I literally ran out of tape. I think I had two and a half hours tape. And I'm like, uh, E.T., I, I, I can't. You're going to have to stop, man. My two and a half hours of tape is up. Wow. On YouTube, viewer EAF writes in and says, did I miss John Murphy? No, that's next hour. Viewer takeover is uh, here. Hey, Ray in Toronto says, young blood. I'm with you there. Yeah. Rob Lowe, did you watch it? Oh, yeah, very underrated. What was the guy's name, the tough guy, Racky, Nick Racky? Wasn't that his name? And whoever the girl was in that movie was highly underrated as well. They would say they played the love interest of Rob Lowe. That's right. How about the billet? Oh, <laughs> oh. Spicy. We don't need to know that part of junior hockey. This was purely fiction. <laughs> Mrs. McGillicuddy, she came out with the tea. <clears throat> Scott in Saskatoon writes in from the 290. Rod, what did you think of the Knights third jersey? Sorry if you already commented late to the party. Didn't already comment on it, so thanks for the question, Scott. I thought they were hot. I thought they were tight. But if I had to... Buy a jersey, which I'm actually saying to Lawless. I might make put an order in there, too, for myself. Being that I'm not a jersey guy, I don't ever wear jerseys. No. I just I have a fetish for them. I bought this Pats one, this Warriors one. The Estevan Bruins dropped this one out. There's something about them. I collect them. I never use them. That, yeah. There's got to be some sort of psychological condition. That there's a name for that. Yeah, you don't wear them. I don't wear them, but I love looking at them and owning them. Yeah, I'd rather wear a hoodie or a quarter zip or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I've got the same thing. I don't wear them, and I'm like, they don't fit right. And I, I want them on the wall, maybe. That's about it. But Yeah. Um, I would buy a gold jersey. Mm-hmm. I would buy a Golden Knights gold jersey. The red, they did what they could do. They did the most with what they had. They want to sell third jersey merchandise, the Golden Knights. I would wear a red Golden Knights golf shirt with that cross swords on it. I would wear it. That's my team, though. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't think I'd be into seeing a bunch of red Golden Knights merch, though. It would just feel weird. A golf shirt's different, right? Like, you can get. I mean, we have RP show, or, you know, you've got the shirts teal, green, blue, red, black, yeah. white, right? Like, that's okay, but... Uh, Lewis Lawner watching. He says, I need to ad we need to address the cluttered desk. Greetings from St. Louis. Go Argos. Lewis, I don't come to your house and tell you how to rearrange your house, so don't come to mine and tell me how to arrange mine. Please and thank you. William May writes in and says he watched Tiger on Crave, and it was great. Alan, the intern, the Asian sensation, says, Uncle Buck, John Candy, highly underrated. Was it underrated? I mean, for your generation, yes, but I mean. Oh, no. When he said to his girlfriend's kid's teacher, here's a quarter. <laughs> Go down to the bus station and get a rat to gnaw that thing off your face. <laughs> I hyperventilated for two days from Caesar, Darren Bradley. Me, myself, and Irene. <laughs> For your information, you used that on yourself. That's good. Remember that line? Yeah. You know what she was dangling there? Yeah. <clears throat> I do. A sex toy. From John in Winnipeg. Again, John Ohm. Ohm. Where did it go? He says, anything John Candy. I lost the comment from I John. have eight Winnipeg Jets jerseys. <laughs> okay. Next hour, John Murphy, and I promise to tone it down. Okay. Uh, thanks to uh, Sean Reynolds of Sportsnet Winnipeg. Ricky Collins Jr. and Murph next hour. Stick around, everybody. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now.
you gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. Hey, it's Warren Dean. I understand more than anyone how changing weather affects your day, and that's no different for your vehicle. That's why I look to the experts at Suds Full Service Car Wash. They have a wide range of exterior washes, including Lava Shield with towel dry. Looking good, Natalie and Kirby. And don't forget their famous Suds Ultimate. Thoroughly cleans the interior of your car. Open Monday to Saturday, no appointment necessary. Head to Suds Full Service Car Wash today, where they treat you like family. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. There's something for everyone at the Mad Greek Eatery. Delicious Greek dishes, pizza, lasagna, pastas, soups, salads, and much more. The Mad Greek Eatery brings the best authentic Greek cuisine right to you. Available for licensed dining, events, delivery, and takeout. For the best taste and huge portions, there is only one place. Visit the Mad Greek Eatery, downtown Moose Jaw. Call for takeout and delivery today. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED Sign Rentals. Video. Video production. Event. Event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. figure it out with Patrick Lyonnais, I guarantee Patrick Lyonnais wins this battle. Uh, Tortorella will not win it after trading Pierre-Luc Dubois for him. How about that? I know John Tortorella very, very well. He wears on you. He's tough. He demands 100%, which every coach should. But I truly believe you can't coach each player the exact same way. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It is, and we're rolling into hour two, coming in hot. No opening preamble here, dupes. Let's go. And we got Andre the Moose uh, sitting on the desktop table here. Sean Reynolds was with us from Sportsnet, Winnipeg in hour one. This hour, John Murphy, the Argos assistant GM, and pending receiver, I guess, current free agent Ricky Collins Jr. Maybe he'll announce which team he is signed with today. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, we closed hour one by saying, what's an underrated movie? What is an underrated movie? I said Hall Pass. Probably is the most underrated movie of all time. Oh, yeah. I still laugh when I think of lines from Hall Pass, and you're all like, what? You know it. He's doing Snow Angels in the Sand Yeah, trap. but it came out a week before 
hangover. <laughs> Terrible timing. Life's about timing, right? Yeah. As soon as Hangover came up, quashed every other movie, and it ran in the theaters for like 10 months. So I say hall pass. Ryan Smith's watching in Edmonton. He says, Grandma's Boy, super underrated. Didn't even play in theaters. It's so underrated, I've never even heard of it. Andy Samberg, I think. Oh, you know it? You've heard of it? Oh, yeah. I think so. I think that's Andy Samberg. Bad Grandpa was good. Oh, that (laughs) That was very good. Amazing. Anyways, it is a sports show that just popped into my head as to what's an underrated movie. So keep it going in the comments section. Uh, (laughs) YouTube and Facebook, please. And by the way, EAF, whomever that is, writes on YouTube and says, Rod, what's your favorite CFL free agency move? Um, I, I'll get into that here. Let's just hit the quick six show topics, please, Jordan. Please and thank you. Hey, back to our normal horn. Thank you. Number one, day one CFL free agency recap. We did that an hour ago. I went through all of the teams. The gentleman asked, what's your favorite signing? Honestly, if I'm being honest, James Wilder Jr. to Edmonton. Because I'm just a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of him personally. I'm a huge fan of him professionally. And when he retired from the Montreal Alouettes, none of us believed he was actually going to retire. Did you? No. No, we, we, we assumed he'd come back. He's been doing wonderful things. Is he in Tampa, right? Yeah. Doing training with kids and, and, and staying in shape. I'm excited to see him uh, take another run at it here. Uh, I'm just calling up uh, rodpeterson.com right now. And just for the benefit of the viewers that weren't worth weren't with us an hour ago, nice little summary here put together by the Canadian press. So the Alouettes signing six defenders. Uh, D. Lyman, Almondo Sewell, Nick Usher, Michael Wakefield, and Woody Barron. Linebackers Patrick Levels and Chris Aki. Linebacker Enoch Mwamba is still out there. And as we said last hour, and I'll say it again, I think he's playing a dangerous game, Enoch. He's an Eastern guy. He's a huge part of what the Alouettes are doing, but he wants to get paid. And that's fine in most years. But I think all those funds are going to be locked up here pretty quick. Maybe we'll ask Murph about that when he, when he comes on with us here in moments' time. Murph. Who said it? Murph. Mm-hmm. Chris Jones. Oh, okay. Murph. I'm, I'm thinking my head's stuck in movies. I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking it's a line for me. Love! <laughs> Will Ferrell. Veteran American defensive lineman Micah Johnson signed with the Rough Riders. Argos shored up their offense by signing running back John White. BC signed American running back Shaquille Cooper. This is kind of all over the place. It's a bit of a mismatch, but you're getting the point. Ottawa re-signed American linebacker Don Unamba, the president. Calgary signed Canadian quarterback Michael O'Connor. BC signed American wide receiver Lucky Whitehead whom we're big fans of. He won the Grey Cup last year with Winnipeg. 522 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Riders signing Evan Johnson, and my phone blew up yesterday with friends of the family. He's a very excited kid, and he should be. And they'll be able to fill the guard hole there left behind by Dakota Shepley. Uh, They also signed American linebacker Larry Dean. Canadian twins Jordan and Justin uh, Justin Herdman-Reed. Did you see the tweet? Who was it, Clark, that tweeted... I thought that was one guy. Kurt, Courtney Steven, did you yeah, see that tweet? Yeah. I thought that was one guy. That's twins? I thought that was the same guy. I just thought it was one guy that was all over the field. Very. That was the highlight of free agency day one, that tweet. Yeah. Riders also signing Lorenzo Jerome, Godfrey Anyaka, and then today signing punter John Ryan. But to me, unless John went to the National Football League, it's not huge news that he's signing with the Riders because there's nowhere else that he wanted to play. At least that was the word in the league. Uh, Winnipeg agreed to terms with long snapper Mike Benson and the Argos signing quarterback Antonio Pipkin. So my sexiest signing, if you will, was James Wilder Jr. to Edmonton. If anybody said that it was a boring day one of free agency, I would advise you to check your pulse. I thought it was very exciting. What was your favorite signing? Um, The Larry Dean signing was good. So was the Almondo Sewell. I like that. You know, I was really curious to see where Almondo would end up. To end up back in Montreal, to end up in Montreal, I uh, I like that signing for sure. And Michael O'Connor too. I'm really, I really am curious to see where Michael O'Connor goes in his career development. I think you know it, he goes to Calgary. Andrew Buckley was there, the last great CIS Canadian quarterback. I think Michael O'Connor has an opportunity to do more. Again, we'll ask Murph. Yeah. Our intern Alan Lee, the Asian sensation, is hard at it, and. Uh... <laughs> He has taken my question and put a twist on it and said, what's the greatest movie line ever? 
And I would agree. Some people saying, go ahead, punk. Make my day. Who said it? Clint Eastwood. Yeah. What was the name of the movie? Man, that's going back a long, long ways. Of course, the Terminator. I'll be back. Says Randolph Zora. Another good one from him was, it's not a tumor. <laughs> I like bad grandpa. When the two, when the two kid, the punk kids are on stage, right? We're all conference lacrosse, grandpa. Yeah, the all diabetes conference. <laughs> oh, I got a story about diabetes and it has to do with Century Link Field in Seattle, but I got to move on. Okay. <laughs> Maybe later we'll circle back. Uh, point two, Tuesday NHL leftovers. I got to go from memory here because I deleted the tweet because I made an error in it. And it was, I tweeted that if only Edmonton could play Ottawa 57 times because they've beaten them four times, but they're actually only playing 56 games. But the orders would be unbeaten if they played Ottawa every game. They're now above 500 for the first time. Uh... I said with the Penguins, two former Flyers are now running the Penguins, Brian Burke and Ron Hextall. Somebody got my face about that, and I don't have the time or energy to explain. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois in the Saddle Dome last night made his debut for the Winnipeg Jets. His stat line was 0, 0, 0, minus 1. And he said after the game, even he can be better. And there were some people in Winnipeg jumping on me for... Pointing out his stat line. I didn't say it was great. I didn't say it was bad. I didn't say it was average. I just pointed out what it was. They took it from there. Yeah. There's still addition by subtraction with him being gone. Um, what else? The Blackhawks. Here come the Hawks. Chandler Stevenson's on a tear for, the, for Canada's team, the Vegas Golden Knights. So that's some of what went down Tuesday in the National Hockey League. Point three, Dr. Shahab has confirmed. He is the... Province's top doctor. Every province has one, right? He's ours. And he has confirmed that the Western Hockey League is looking at a Regina bubble. It was at a news conference yesterday. He just confirmed the Jeff Merrick report, but did not confirm that they'd approved it. He sounded positive, though. He said other leagues are pulling off a bubble successfully in this country. That's what it's going to take for the Western Hockey League to do it. So we continue to sit here with our fingers crossed and wait to be deployed. Point four. Dak Prescott left out of the Dallas Cowboys hype video for 2021. I know that doesn't seem like a big deal to you, and I won't go on the big monologue that I did last hour, but it is a big deal when you do a two-minute video from your social media platforms for a pro football team and you don't put your marquee player in it. That's a big deal, especially in Dallas. But I'm with the Cowboys on this one. He chose to sign a one-year franchise tag last year, and now he's not really under contract to the football team. You're not part of the team, Dakota. So that's your choice. So are you going to sign long-term? They can be franchise tagged again, right? Yeah. How's your ankle, by the way? He just made a very bad decision, I think, by b taking the franchise tag. Like, he was coming off a $2 million a year contract to 32 Was I, what he ended up getting? I know, but he did. they did have such that hot offensive start to the year. Everything was rolling. They're racking up yards and points. They're still losing games. <laughs> but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. To the viewer board. They're awake in there today. Who's the guy? Ricardo, the Tie Cat fan, says, I love the Sam Mitchell-esque take on his stat line. So do I. His stat line was zero, zero, zero. And the best part of that is, why don't you do us all a favor and quit? Nobody's saying that, but they might be saying that to Line in Columbus. William May says the Edmonton game was boring. I'm not going to lie with you there, but I'll tell you, if you haven't got center ice yet, NHL center ice, what are you waiting for? So there's a hole in the ice in Ottawa. Did you see this? Yeah. So they're patching it with the uh, fire extinguisher and putting some uh, snow on it. And I just flipped over to the Florida game. And I got introduced to a bunch of... New people there and enjoyed that game and forgot to go back for a while. Yeah. NHL center ice is just the greatest darn thing. Oh, yeah. And as people have said to me, how did you go your whole life without having it? 
Again, if I must, we live in the Bermuda Triangle of the NHL. We're right in the middle of Winnipeg, Calgary, and Edmonton. We're in the rights regions for all those teams. And may I, when you work in hockey... You don't have time to the watch The way you hockey. consume hockey is in highlights at the end of the night. Yeah. You know, that's just the way it works. And my... Yeah, and my favorite teams have been the Coyotes and the uh, Golden Knights. Yeah. And just and invariably every night, one of those three teams here in the Bermuda Triangle was playing them. So I didn't need to pay for center ice because I was getting their games all the time for free. And now I don't get Golden Knights games unless I pay for them. Simple. William May says, Rod, who is or was your favorite Dallas Cowboys player? Really? Troy Aikman, number eight. Always was, always will be Troy Aikman. And the best color guy, too. Uh, point five, where will Cameron Judge go? We didn't spend the time on this that I would have liked. Uh, this is the word in the league, and everybody are, is saying that because he's not coming back to Saskatchewan, that it's some sort of affront to the organization. I don't believe it is. I believe Cam Judge loved playing here, but he's all about getting paid, as is Solomon Elamimian. Who can blame them? So the word in the league is that Cam Judge is in, in pursuit of an NFL deal. If he doesn't get it, he will sign with either Toronto or BC. Apparently, they've got the cash left over. It's evident the Rough Riders do not. It's not a personal affront. I know everybody's getting upset that you're losing your star players. You would think after 111 years of Rough Riders football, you would be used to losing star players. It happens. They don't get used to it. No, they don't, they don't get, get used, used to, to it. it. And to point six, more on bell cuts. I have written down here CFL Network. Just making a note here. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what to do like with all these radio stations getting gassed. It's still the talk of the country. I'm still stunned that Bell would do that at the exact time of CFL free agency opening. And I went home yesterday and I thought I could have refined my take, like how tone deaf it was. In three CFL markets, two of your stations being rights holders to fire everybody on the day that the C local CFL team opens free agency. And yes, the business people say, well, we weren't aware of that. That's not our deal. I'm saying it should be your deal. Get your head out of your ass. Open the blinds. Talk to somebody. Instead of sitting there and thinking where we can cut, 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 and affecting 800 lives, if that's the reported number, Start talking to people. Get out of your ivory towers. That's the problem with the world right now. With regards to a CFL network, hey, I'm game. I said an hour ago that my wife said to me, hey, you watch ESPN every morning. Get up. That's a lot. It's like this, but of American topics. And she said, that, well, the NFL's over. What are they going to talk about? I said, they're going to talk about the NFL. You watch, Cindy, for 12 straight months. Every single day, they talk about the NFL on ESPN. But the CFL, for the longest time, Hasn't wanted that. I still don't think they wanted that. In my role as voice of the riders, it was like pulling teeth to get players and coaches in the offseason because it's their offseason, Rod. We don't want to bother them. We don't want to schedule an interview with them on your radio show. And I'm like, <sighs> that's why when Suter came out the other day and said we all need to work together, could I have made it any more clear? Now? Now they're going to start working together? To promote and build and save this league? I don't think so. So I'm sitting here going, yeah, let's do a CFL network. I'm all ears. But I'm not doing it on anybody else's terms but ours. That's my take. What's yours? Yeah. You know, I don't want, like, I can't disagree with Bell deciding to cut the stations. That's a business decision. And I can't comment on their business decision without knowing the ins and outs of the business. But as we talked about it yesterday, the way it went down, it's cold, man. Like, there's so many. And I don't know that I have the right answer on, on how to execute something like that. Right? And maybe, you know, for every situation, it's different. But you, you mentioned being tone deaf. Just listen. You know, talk to people. Um, you know, make a decision based, like, unless you really think that they are literally going to light the building on fire and torch it to the ground, there's a better way to handle it than the way that they did. There's a better way to handle it. It's just not the right way, and it's a bad look. You can eliminate those stations. Well. And we can respect the business side of it, but, I mean, there's a better way. Murph is on hold, so we're going to bring him in next. We'll cut out of the warm-up early. But what I said was, this is Chris Jones-style taking the dog out behind the barn and... 
right in the back of the head. And people don't like that. They've been watching Yellowstone. They're taking them to the train station. What does, you know, <clears throat> what Jones says is it's pulling off a Band-Aid. That's one way of doing it. It offends a lot of people, but you want a slow death or you want a quick death. What do you want? So I don't have an opinion on how Bell did it. I, you do. Um, I'm not sure there's any good way to fire somebody. I really don't. But I do love the quote from Terry Simpson, who's become a good friend, former coach of the New York Islanders, Philadelphia Flyers, PA Raiders. He said, once you've been fired enough, you get immune to it. <laughs> I will go along with that. It's like, oh, you don't want me around anymore? Okay, you want me this money? You got to uh, buy. Have a nice life. We're good. Yeah. But for the first time, it doesn't feel too good. Larry in Medicine Hat says, Rod's show is the CFL Network. I think it should be explored, but not today. Murph is in next. Ricky Collins Jr. coming up later. It's the RP Show on Game Plus TV across all 10 provinces and 31 states. Live daily on YouTube and Facebook. And listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. An original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Building a deeper connection with our fans by putting them in the show. It's a new era of sports talk. The Rod Peterson Show airs from 10 to noon, Monday to Friday on Facebook Live. Join the conversation today and tune in. Online, on your phone, at home, at work. Follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. And subscribe on YouTube for all the content you want to watch. Don't wait, do it right now.
Oh, yeah. He's back. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, everybody. The Telemiracle 50-50 draw is live now. The online 50-50 for Telemiracle. If you have spent any time in Saskatchewan, you know what it's all about. The Kinsman Foundation is helping people every day improve their quality of life and independence through gifts of mobility, equipment, and medical travel assistance. This year is Telemiracle 45, the weekend-long live telethon on CTV. But COVID has presented a considerable amount of obstacles for the Kinsman Foundation. So we're asking you, if you're 19 years of age or older, and you have to be in Saskatchewan, so you ex-Saskies, get your family to get out their credit card and buy your tickets. It's one for $20, five for $50, 20 for $100, or 100 tickets for $250. You can purchase them at telemiracle5050.ca. The draw date is Friday, February 26th. We'll be announced at the start of Telemiracle 45 on Saturday, February the 27th. We're growing by about $10,000 a day. I can't thank you enough for rallying to the cause for our biggest fundraiser in this province every single year. We got some people upset at us in Vancouver. That's not new, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's bring in Murph, our good friend John Murphy, the Assistant General Manager of the Toronto Argonauts, joining us from the Gulf Coast. How you doing, Murph? Doing excellent. Hi, Roddy. How you doing? And we're doing good. Happy New Year, my man. Um, hey, the Argos, it would seem, got a lot of business done last week prior to free agency. And some of your fans are going, hey, what are you guys doing? Haven't you been busy enough? <laughs> well, you know, I guess, uh, you know, when, when you've been down so long and, and, and you've been away from the element of interacting with your fan base, uh, you were mentioning it, the, the, the media interaction, everybody's kind of just trying to keep their own business afloat. So it's kind of hard uh, you know, to let people know what's going on kind of behind the scenes. So, uh, of course, you'd always want the action to kind of be on that day. Uh, I think that's, you know, what your fans are expecting is they'd love to to have it happen almost every day leading up to free agency. But, you know, I, I thought the thing in this time frame was uh, when you knew there might be guys that other teams had had stopped interacting with or maybe could not get on the same page with uh, and, and were not sure if they were going to get them back, uh, to be aggressive, um, you know, to reach out and say, hey, if you're kind of uh, at an impasse or don't think the numbers are going to make it, uh, you know, what about being open to a trade? Because then all it did was kind of slide it over to us to where we could fully interact with those players, uh, you know, in a greater way, you know, with pretty much everybody in our organization then having the ability, you know, to interact with them, tell about the city, talk about the opportunity, uh, interact with the coaching staff, and yet it still allowed the team that traded them to us to then have the open window when when that opened up. So it wasn't a final decision, you know, by those clubs, but I, I think it was something uh, that allowed us, you know, creatively to start working the numbers and making sure that everything we wanted to get done could still get done within the parameters of our budget. So how are you feeling about your roster as you said? Charleston Hughes was a big acquisition. You have a new quarterback in Nick Arbuckle. You signed another one in Antonio Pipkin. It's February, Murph. you got a long ways to go. But as we sit here today, how are you feeling? I felt, I felt good a year ago. and <laughs> We never got to, to see it play out. So it's a, it's a second roster. It's like we played, you know, two years straight of fantasy football without mm -hmm. ever able to see how it was going to execute itself on the field. Um, but I also think that those those two years are completely different and separated by the factor of uh, you have brand new situations that that occurred. You have brand new potential situations occurring moving forward. Um, so I think sliding in the direction of going uh, and making sure there's a balance of CFL experience along with a high level of competition that we're able to get with no XFL playing uh, with guys in the getting these to work out and maybe uh, get another opportunity back in the NFL is allowed uh, a couple of guys that think surprising to CFL fans see making the jump that quickly to the CFL. Um, and, and now it's about, you know, kind of just finishing off uh, some of the other aspects of, of what you want to do full force at the uh, draft and the, in the Canadian draft and the global draft. Uh, and then waiting to see. I'm uh, very excited that the league and the Players Association, you know, are talking about getting down to talking about the business of getting back on the field. And, and like all of our, our employees, our fans, you know, our coaches and staff, you know, it, it's just we need to get back on the field. Uh, we need to put this product 
fans. Our fans will be excited to see uh, some of the kind of homegrown talent, you know, that we have. Again, over 80% of our Canadians will be, you know, guys that were born and raised in the uh, Ontario area. I've seen it work in Calgary. We know it works in Saskatchewan. You know, you keep the young guys, develop them at home. If you can draft them or sign them, it's a, it's a great idea, you know, and something very functional for, for our league, you know, for our fans to be able to support guys that they've watched grow up, you know, in the sport and then have them right in front of you. Uh, you know, so to me, there's uh, better days ahead. But the, uh, the main thing to remember is the Argonauts have never been in last place uh, as long as they have been starting. You know, that's where we need to build from. That's where our culture needs to change. And they have to have the understanding that, you know, we're, we're not trying to improve. We're not trying to, uh, you know, just uh, be a playoff contender or have a chance, you know, to make the playoffs. You know, we're trying to show up, go 18, you know, in any Argo had. And if you ever want to put that on the field and have an opportunity for it, you have to work at it every day. Some viewer comments here. Jack Fulton, whom you know well, watching in Vulcan, Alberta. Love Murph, great at finding talent, but even more importantly, a great dad. Always a big fan of John's. From Craig Campbell, downtown Toronto at the Hockey Hall of Fame, he writes, Argos, looking forward to seeing the new signings in 2021. Please add the Stompin' Tom Connors football song to your game day music playlist. Next time you're in Toronto, Murph, you got to go down to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Ask for Craig. He's the biggest Argo fan I know in downtown Toronto. And I know you will do that because I know you. Um, what can you tell the fans about Cameron Judge, Murph? You drafted him here in Saskatchewan, and I guess he's told the Riders he's not coming back. What is his status here on day two of free agency? Yeah, Cam was a guy that we all loved. It was very obvious that uh, his film, in terms of his play level at UCLA and, and becoming a team captain uh, and then just playing through um, the shoulder injury he had you know, in college, but having the willingness to play through be a team leader and, and showing that kind of toughness. Same thing he did early in his career with Saskatchewan. He could have opted to have that surgery early in his pro career, but likely would have missed most or all of his rookie year. Instead, say, uh, you're like, hey, I'm going to play until it pops out a couple of times. And then when the doctors tell me I shouldn't do that anymore, that's when I'll have the surgery. That was a collective effort. Uh, you know, all of us agreed that he was the best player, you know, on the board. And that was very exciting. Uh, I, you know, that was a great draft in terms of being able to uh, get not only him, but then in the second round, uh, Darius Bladick was still on the board and we were able to kind of kill two birds with one stone. You know, from what I know right now, you know, his thing was, uh, I want to concentrate on this NFL workout. It's been something six plus months in the making for him. Uh, if you know Cam, his, you know, his girlfriend, you know, lives down in Vegas. So for him to have a shot of working out for the Raiders, uh, I think it's something very important for him at this stage of his career to see where he stands, to to see what they think of him. Uh, is there a possibility that he could make a go of that? And then if not, he just said, uh, if a team can wait for me uh, and be available, I'll, I'll take that into consideration, you know, when it's time to make those conversations and decisions. Um, so, you know, for us, it was a very comfortable scenario to say, you know, like, hey, you know, I don't mind waiting for – you know, February, whatever, or March or April or whatever it would be. If, if there's a chance uh, that, that he's interested in us after that, will be terrific. And if there's a chance that he can sign with us, well, hopefully he'll see tickets. More viewer comments from Miranda Foster. Miss you and Sask, John, going to miss Judge. From Jim Noble, he says, hi. Jim from Lindsay, Ontario. So there's a lot of Argo fans that are tuning in. I want to address your quarterbacks, though. Willie Jefferson sent out a tweet last night saying, how many quarterbacks do the Argos have? And I remember here, Murph, February of 2017, after you traded Darian Durant away, right? You sat across the table from me. We were doing the show at the hockey rink. And you said, if we can't find a quarterback, it's February. We'll be good. And you ended up signing Kevin Glenn and went one play away from getting to the Grey Cup, losing in the Eastern Final. Can you just address the Argos quarterback situation as we sit here on February 10th? Yeah, I mean, this the, the opportunity to, to have things change in terms of Nick Arbuckle has not played another play since the last time we saw him. Uh, what has changed is you did not have to trade draft equity, which was something that early in our time in Saskatchewan, 
Jeremy and I would be sitting there like literally on a daily basis sweating about the lack of draft draft equity, uh, you know, that, right? You obviously know great rider teams were built on offensive and defensive linemen. The, the draft has always been a huge part of the CFL, you know, to any successful organization, you know, the BC Lions with Wally, you know, Huff and the Stampeders, any Saskatchewan, you know, run of, of years of success has been built off of, you know, high Canadian content. And you look at what Jim Pop did, you know, with those teams in Montreal, five offensive starting linemen, and they kept drafting them and having them and having them in plentiful, you know, numbers, making a trade uh, of what Calgary was able to achieve to trade Nick Arbuckle was not a move that the Argos could make in that time frame. Number two, he was looking for a contract that, again, felt comfortable. That was the type of investment we could make financially, not in the player, but in the salary cap, uh, and to build a good enough team around him. Now we take a 12-month layoff. Here we are again with an opportunity. Things are getting down to the wire. You know, we had conversations with our own guys. We had conversations about who might be available honestly never thought that nick would come back into the picture because of all the things he's living in uh you know in their you know their city he's uh involved with all their non-football player programs and stuff so was very surprising uh that afternoon uh on sunday to, to hear that from his agent that uh, they may not move forward and that uh there might be an opportunity you know to speak to him and uh you know anybody you know you had jack fulton you know chime in Anyone who's interacted, uh, you know, with Nick off the field knows what kind of person he is, knows what kind of uh, family member and, and family guy and husband he is and great young family and a kid that really has his, you know, his perspectives in, in perfect order for what you want. If you want to, you're expecting big things from uh, the way we are. You want to have a guy that's going to be kind of feet on the ground, you know, heads not kind of too up in the air, you know, about himself and, and, you heard it in his first interview. There, he has not won the job yet. Uh, there will be a competition, and even if he wins it on on throw three or day one or or play seven, you know, of the preseason game, uh, you know, you're going to get a guy that's going to continue to give you that hard effort, you know, day in and day out. If your best people and your hardest workers are also your most talented players, you have a mid shot. And when you made that comparison. The day that we made the decision that we were not going to get something done with Darian and let him go to where he was going and, and let that situation play itself out, good things happen because you go back and look. Kevin Glenn has had as good a season he ever had in his career that season. And I know it's, you know, it's sad, you know, it's <laughs> or the angst is still there as fresh as it was when it happened. If Kevin Glenn does not spike his hand off the helmet. I wonder who wins the Grey Cup that season. Just always going to leave it out there and say it because Kevin Glenn was playing as good as any quarterback in the league that year. Brandon Bridge, we were able to you know acquire him and develop him. David Watford is still playing in the league. Vernon Adams is now an MVP candidate last time we played in the league. The quarterback scenario opened itself up because as an organization – we had the willingness to be open to what was available. And that is because each person in their role went out and watched all these guys. Chris did, the coaches did, Jeremy did, I did. And then everybody had a formulated opinion so that everybody's guy almost got a shot to be in the room. Please, again, when you're in Toronto, go down to Mike Hogan's office and say to him what you just said to me about the hit to the head of Kevin Glenn. Because he says, I'm always whining about officiating, and we're talking about the exact same play, Murph. Look, we got to go. We're fresh out of time. TV not as lenient as radio. I appreciate this, my man, and stay in touch, please. Excellent. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. John Murphy, Toronto Argonauts Assistant General Manager. I just want to get to a, a couple of Prairie Mobile text messages before we take a break and move in. Ricky Collins Jr., I was asking earlier, what is the most underrated movie? Alan the Intern has added to that. What's the most famous movie line ever? And we've got a lot here. Cleaver in Swift Current writes in and says, Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Well, that, of course, is Forrest Gump. Wayne in Victoria writes in and says, to answer your question about the most underrated movie of all time, I would say Bicentennial Man. I'm not sure I've ever even heard of that. From the 290, Scott in Saskatoon, 
Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. Now, that was just bad. Not underrated. Movie line, look what you did, you little jerk. (laughs) Home Alone. And he also refers to Weekend at Bernie's. I think about that movie quite often. And uh, lastly, from Brandon Crow. Hey, Rod. Brandon Crow here in Brandon from the 204. Did you see the tweet from the Wheat Kings yesterday? With the Hextall News, now four former Wheat Kings as general managers in the WHL. Keep up the great work, boys. Keeps the mind fresh during this off time for us broadcasters. Okay, you're going to have to. Kevin Dayoff, Kelly McCrimmon, Ron Hextall. Anyone? Anyone? Well, think about it when we come back. And Ricky Collins Jr. too. It's the RP Show, Game Plus Television, across all 10 provinces and 31 states, live daily on YouTube and Facebook, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event. Event management. No further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. There's something for everyone at the Mad Greek Eatery. Delicious Greek dishes, pizza, lasagna, pastas, soups, salads, and much more. The Mad Greek Eatery brings the best authentic Greek cuisine right to you. Available for licensed dining, events, delivery, and takeout. For the best taste and huge portions, there is only one place. Visit the Mad Greek Eatery, downtown Moose Jaw. Call for takeout and delivery today. Look like the pros. Shop Ultimate Fan Zone. NHL, NFL, MLB, CFL, NBA, and more. We have something for every sports fan. Autographed jerseys, prints, jersey stitching, custom framing, and collectibles. UFZ is your one-stop sports store offering fans official team gear. Check out Saskatchewan's Man Cave Corner on River and Main, downtown Moose Jaw, or visit us online at ultimatefanzone.ca. Built by fans for the fans. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. back and kicking it let's head back to the studio here's rob welcome back everybody we found the fourth nhl gm 
that was a former Brandon Wheat King. Kelly McCrimmon, Ron Hextall, Kevin Dayoff, and Calgary Flames' Brad Treleving. And we are asking our viewers... Who is the most underrated movie of all time? Stephen Bullock is watching in uh, BC. He says Police Academy. Uh, hey, I loved it. I love Steve Gutenberg, but there were two sequels after the fact, Stephen. So I don't think that counts as underrated. But keep him coming. We're going to Texas now. I'm not sure if it's home is his hometown, Tyler, Texas. But Ricky Collins Jr. joins us. As of yesterday, a free agent... CFL wide receiver Ricky, happy new year, my man. How are you? I'm doing fine, man. How you doing? Good. This is a guy that could sing I've Been Everywhere, man. He hasn't been in the CFL for that long, four seasons, but two with Saskatchewan, one with BC, and then a career year in Edmonton with 1,103 yards, and unfortunately released prior to a bonus here earlier this month. The fans are all hoping you'll announce your new team, Ricky, uh, live on the show today. Can you do that? <laughs> No, I can't do that today, man. But hopefully I, um, we can see something happen soon. What's the last 24 hours been like for you? Oh, the last 24 hours has been kind of a uh, up and down battle, like stressful, not stressed, but at the same time, just seeing some of those receivers been taken off the board out of free agency before me. It's like, okay, mine should be coming any day now. It should be like the next call, but you know, it's one of those up and down battles. Are you dealing with an agent or no? Yes. You are. Okay. Because Charleston Hughes, I don't know if you saw the interview with Chucky last week, and he was like, he doesn't have an agent, man. He's like, I will never do this again. <laughs> He's like, it's so stressful <laughs> and feelings are yeah. involved. And uh, that's not dealing with an agent. But can you please speak for all those players that get cut the day before a huge bonus is due? How did it affect your life. We hear about it all the time, but we never hear from the players. What did it do um, to you? Well, given the fact that it was one of those things where you signed a deal, you know, like contract agreement, and you're looking forward to getting what you were guaranteed and with, with you signing that contract, and then you up and get a phone call of, hey, we can't do X, Y, and Z, so now it's, you take this or you this happens. So it's one of those where it make you second guess like the nature of the game and the nature of do you really want to play? You know, like do you want to put your family throughout this? So it's one of the that's really a stressful thing to put your family through. Like that's one of the most stressful things I've had to put my family through right now at this moment. Well, I'm I'm glad to for the explanation, but I hope you didn't have the money spent before you got it. I know a lot of guys that have done that. That didn't happen, did it? No, no, no. That didn't happen at all. Okay, good. Well, I know that you're a smart guy. I didn't think that it would. But, hey, I want to I want to tell this story just for the CFL fans. I was with the Riders when you came to the team in 2016. You were a CFL rookie. And Jones and Murph were so high on you. And I remember you muffed a punt in the preseason game. Do you remember that? And I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, man, you get cut for stuff like that. And Murph's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like. He's made the team already. They, they, Ricky has made the team. This is not a debut out here tonight. They have plans for Ricky Collins. They knew how special a player that you were going to be, Ricky. But were you worried at all after that game? Did you think that you would have a long pro career? Um, I mean, you know, being a pro athlete and then you go out there and have a mishap like that, that's always one of those situations where it's like, did I just get myself cut? And then <laughs> to come back and, you know, like play as long as I've played in the CFL, it's really been a blessing, honestly. I didn't think that I would have a uh, long career, a career as long as I did have had right now. Well, uh, I guess you would never have known whether you made the team or not. I guess I should have told you what uh, Murph was saying because, yeah, you did go on to a great year with the Riders, and then, and then 1,100 plus years in 29 or yards with the uh, Eskimos in 2019. What do you attribute that to, Ricky? Because that's a significant jump in stats for you. Um, hard work and dedication, man. Never giving up on myself, never giving up on the vision that I have for myself and, you know, just keeping a good um party around me, you know, as far as my wife, my kids, my family, then my trainer and close net friends that I have. So what's going to tip the scales for where you sign next? What are you waiting on? Man, it's, 
you know, it's one of those situations where I have to be wanted. I have to be wanted. I have to feel like I want it. I don't want to, I'm, this is another thing that I'm tired of being disrespected, you know, given the fact of how everything just went down and how everything's going now. Like, I think it's time for me to start getting my respect around the CFL with it, given the fact of the stats that I just put up, you know, so that's what all key uh, contributors. Well, I think it's a good thing that we're doing this interview today to show the teams that don't know you what kind of guy you are. I've always known you as a good guy. And Jack in uh, Vulcan, Alberta says, Ricky is right on. Players deserve more respect. Honor the contracts. I would say, gentlemen, respectfully, don't hold your breath. It's, it's the way business is done <laughs> in this league. Micah always watching from Texas. He says, Ricky, great guy, great receiver. You guys played together in BC, did you not? Right. Yeah, and he's got hashtag Texas boys. So, Ricky, what uh, what would you like CFL teams to know here as you sit here and sort of, I guess, sift through offers, that kind of thing? I mean, that they're going to get a, a baller, you know? It's one of those situations where I put up stats everywhere I go, you know? Um, I'm productive everywhere I go. I mean, I just finished eighth in receiving yards and eighth in catches, so the proof is in the pudding, you know what I mean? Like I said, I go out, I put up stats. I had a career year this year, so they're going to get a baller regardless. Well, and if I may, you're only getting better. Like at 28, right. you're just reaching the prime of your career. It was another thing that Jones <laughs> taught me. He's like, older guys get hurt, young guys make mistakes. Rookies make mistakes. You want guys right in that late 20s realm, right? Your mistakes mm-hmm. are out of the way. You're in the prime of your career, and that's where Ricky Collins is right now. So, again, do we have any idea when we are going to get an announcement, Ricky? Are we going to get an announcement? Like, are you coming back? What do we know as we sit here today? <laughs> Am I coming back? Am I coming back where? That's what it is. Okay, good. Well, would you do me a favor and let us be the first to know? I'll definitely let you know, man. You're my guy. <laughs> All right, Ricky. I appreciate it. Say hey to your gal for me and your boy, and uh, good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Ricky Collins Jr. joining us on video chat today from Texas. Uh, one of the biggest names still left on the board in the Canadian Football League. I want to uh, read a sports update before we break and bring dupes back in. Showdown between Canada's top NHL teams tonight. The Montreal Canadiens host the Toronto Maple Leafs in an original six battle at the Bell Centre. The Leafs sit three points ahead of the Habs, but Montreal has a game in hand. Toronto Raptors look to continue their winning ways tonight. Toronto continues a road trip in Washington against the Wiz. Raps have won four of their last five. Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban says he decided before this season began not to play the national anthem before the team's home games. The Mavs played their first 10 regular season games at home without fans. The club had fans for the first time on Monday. Cuban didn't elaborate on his decision not to play the anthem, saying nobody noticed. And British Open organizers say they have cautious optimism that golf's oldest major will go ahead at Royal St. George's in July. The event was canceled last year for the first time since 1945 because of the pandemic. There is currently a lockdown in place in England amid the rollout of a vaccination program. This sports update for the Tap Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store corner of Rochdale and Pasqua, and for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars, now with eight amazing flavors, including the new Almond Mocha. RP Show viewers get 20% off with the promo code RP Show. Order yours now at G2GBars.ca. Viewer takeover next. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus Television Network, live daily on YouTube and Facebook, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at RodPeterson.com. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. 
It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. An original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. And uh, Moose DuPont's here as well, joining us for the viewer takeover segment and the face-off coming up. But I, the secret sauce of this show, if you haven't figured it out, is the viewer takeover in the comments, and we interact. But you have to understand, we are not a jukebox that you plug in a quarter and we play your favorite song <laughs> right when you want it. Like, people were, now they all got questions about the Argos. Murph's gone. My suggestion to you is watching the entire two hours, and then you will get all of what you came for. Right. But Ivan Diablo says, is Nick Arbuckle going to be that much of an upgrade versus Caleros? Ivan, you're a huge Argo fan, but come on. Zach Caleros never took one snap for the Toronto Argonauts in his second incarnation in Toronto. So he's gone. Yeah. You can't compare. You should be asking if Arbuckle's an upgrade from Matt Nichols, who incidentally also didn't take a snap. If, Nar if Nick Arbuckle was good enough for the Ottawa Red Blacks initially when they acquired him and then signed him, I think he's good enough for the Toronto Argonauts. But let's also remember that it's February 10th. There's many miles to go before we sleep. Yeah. Face off, and then if we've got time, I'll go to more text messages here on the Prairie Mobile text line. But face off is for the Ultimate Fan Zone and the Mad Greek Restaurant, and it's about the Patrick Line situation. Rolling over our poll question today, who lasts longer in Columbus, John Tortorella or Patrick Line? They had a spat. Line A lipped off an assistant coach reportedly, and Torts benched him. Question is, who lasts longest? Have you figured it out yet? I, I'm leaning Line A. I'm leaning Line A, and I'm a Torts fan. I like John Tortorella. I like what he's about. I like, I, 
I, I tend to draw myself. I like guys like that. I'm not like that, like John Tortorella, but I lean that way. But, you know, because it's not the first time with a star, that's why I think line A lasts longer. I think, you know, the first time they give the coach the benefit of the doubt, the second time they probably lean to the star player. Unless there's a market for line A to get moved again, which you have to think it'll get it'll shrink, but I think line A lasts longer. What was the stat? Line A has been top five or six in goals in the last three years in the National Hockey League. There will always be a market for Patrick Line. And that's why if he is doing you know what to the dog repeatedly here, and maybe he's not a good teammate, and maybe he's lipping off coaches, I'm sorry, he'll be gone. And John Tortorella, who has got the Stanley Cup behind his name, will last longer than Patrick Laine. He can't win all of these battles against players, is what you're saying. Yeah, He'll win this one, and I believe John Tortorella will be there longer than Patrick Laine, but it won't. Neither one will be gone this year. The Faceoff is uh, brought to you daily for the Ultimate Fan Zone. They're your one-stop shop for the sports fans on your list. Memorabilia, collectibles, licensed team apparel, and more. Visit the Man Cave, downtown Moose Jaw, or find them on Facebook and Instagram at Ultimate Fan Zone Moose Jaw. And for the Mad Greek in Moose Jaw, available for licensed dining, takeout, or delivery, head to the madgreekeatery.com for more information. To the viewer board, uh, viewer Andrew Gregg says, Hey, Rod, where do you think Mwamba will go? Sorry to say, Andrew, and I'm not being cheeky. He's going to whomever will pay him the most. But it won't be Montreal. Danny Machocha said yesterday, it's, it's done. He's not coming back. It's to whomever will pay him the most, and you can't blame him. He's an Eastern guy, but I think in this environment, you're playing a dangerous game sitting out waiting for more money when there isn't much money. And I told you I had a story about my dad in Columbus. Okay? Yeah. So the greatest talk I ever had with my dad, he had just sold all his land. This was the NHL draft in 2007. He had just sold all his draft prior to the stock market crashing in 08. I was still drinking back then. I was rooming with my dad at the hotel in Columbus. I left my credit card at a bar called Spice. Don't ask. So he and I walked to this bar Spice together and had the greatest talk we'd ever had. Said why he'd sold his land. He said, you boys weren't interested in farming it, and I respect that you've got your own career aspirations. You go do what you do and follow your dreams. I'm not mad. A real Yellowstone moment. Wow. And he also said... Listen, I'm sorry I couldn't be a help of you with your divorce. I've been married to your mom. She's always been the only one for me. I've been the happiest and luckiest guy in the world. So I apologize that I couldn't help you when you were going through your divorce. I'm like, Dad, it's all right. And we, got, we had to stay over that night. Our flight got canceled out of Columbus. So we go to the front desk at American Airlines, and the lady goes, that's so sweet that you're traveling with your dad. Here's some hotel vouchers for the night. Would you like to room with your dad? No! Because he snows like a, uh, snores like a rhinoceros. <laughs> so thanks, but no, it's not that sweet. <laughs> oh, that's great. So we had this great chat. In but. Columbus, of all places. Columbus. We had to go to Columbus to have the best talk of our life. Isn't that crazy? That's cool. Oh, and my dad, by the way, was scouting for the, for the Dallas Stars. So, uh, so there's that. Do you got, can you put up who we've got on the show tomorrow, gentlemen? If you don't mind, a big thanks to Sean uh, Reynolds and John Murphy and Ricky Collins Jr. for joining us uh, today on the program. They were fantastic. Hurry up. Hurry up. Morley Scott will be with us, the voice of the Edmonton football team and mental strength coach J.B. Spiso from the NHL. That's going to be great. See you tomorrow at noon Eastern on Game Plus. Nerds!